whatever you want. That last hanging does that guy up and down like he's on a rubber band. We didn't do any weight, 134. Adding a couple of pounds for breakfast the way those guys always eat, that brings it up to 136. Keep it up, you'll get the spring out of it. We want this one's neck broke. All right. Margolis. This is Mr. McHugh of the City News Bureau. Is it true, madam, that you were the victim of a peeping tom? Ask her if she's worth peeping at. Oh, now, madam, that ain't the right attitude to take. All we want is the fact. Tell her I can run up for an hour. Tell her to come over here. We'd like to reenact the crime. Just a minute, madam. Is it true, Mrs. Margolis, that you took the part of Lady Godiva for charity seven years ago? Hello? She cut off. What, her hair? Tell her I'll be right over. Yep. No, Hildy Johnson. Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Burns. No, Hildy hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, sure, Mr. Burns. Hello, Van Singer. I just had an interview with Williams. Over in that death house. That jail. That jail is reeking with germs. Oh, believe me, the Board of Health is going to hear about the conditions over there through my paper. It's amazing to me that those prisoners can live long enough to get home. What's the idea, Mac? Say, is that the only telephone in this place? It's the only one with a mouthpiece. How many times have I got to tell you fellas to let my phone alone? You want to talk through a mouthpiece? Go and buy one like I did. Whitney, 9,000. The germs of the mouth are the most contagious. Oh, shut up, Listerine. Whitney, 9,000. What is this, a hospital? Yeah, Roy, how's your pimple coming along? Hello, Sarge. McHugh. Anything doing? Say, you don't have to use my desk for a garbage can either. Say, how would you like to stop stinking up this place with those antiseptics? Yeah, anything new on the hanging, Ben Singer? My deal, ain't it? Hey, Zonite. What is it? Question before the house. Gentleman wants to know if there's anything new on the hanging. Oh, nothing special. Did you talk to the sheriff? Why don't you get your own news? Somebody ought to see the sheriff. Criminal court's press room. No, Hilly Johnson ain't. Oh, yes, Mr. Burns. What? I know, Mr. Burns. Uh, yes, Mr. Burns. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Walter Burns for Hilly again. Something must have happened. I'll tell you what's happened. Hildy's quit. Oh, nerds. You know, Hildy's a fixture on the morning post. Yeah, he goes with the woodwork. Well, he told me he was going to quit. Say, listen, Walter Burns wouldn't let him quit. 
He'd find a way to keep him here somehow. Remember what he did to Fenton when he wanted to go to Hollywood? <laughs> Got him into a fight and had him thrown into jail for assault and battery. <laughs> Give me a rewrite. Well, if he ain't quit, why ain't he here covering the hangar? I wish I could quit. Ready? Nurse Isabel Zobo. Z for zebra, O for onion, B for baptize, E for anything, L for, uh... L for, uh... Oh, don't tell him anybody. L for Listerine. Swedish masseuse, with rooms at 608 Inverness Avenue. Well, this dame was arrested tonight on complaint of a lot of angry wives. They claim she's been treating their husbands with electricity at a dollar a time. Well, the Swedish tease is in again. I understand she massages them, too. Well, anyway, she's arrested, and the station house is full of her patients claiming she's innocent. Half the stock exchange is there, too, trying to provide bail. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Main 6800. Say, Ernie, why don't you take up electricity instead of that noise? Oh, it's got no future. Press? No, Mr. Burns. Hilly Johnson ain't. I'm not lying, Mr. Burns. Walter acted like he'd burst a blood vessel. You playing golf, sir? No. Then I'll have to put another man on the job. In your hat, Duffy. I'm after that bunch of belly livered pot marked peanut politicians who think they're running this town. And Hildy Johnson's the only man on the staff I can trust tonight. We've got to have, uh, We've got to have Johnson. But you haven't got it. Society knows to get a look at Walter Burns' face when he hears of this. Oh, I'd write him for a year to see him when he hears I'm getting married. Oh, I'd write him for two years to get a lot of what he says when I'm leaving this town for that New York. What's the matter? Oh, so that's why you got that. Walter Burns. That's why you're going to marry me, Walter Burns. That's why you're going to New York, to spite Walter Burns. Oh, honey, you're crazy. Now listen. Listen, dear, did you ever come up out of a sewer? Did you ever come up? Mm. Did you ever come up out of a sewer and have the cool, fresh air hit you? Well, I did. And honey, you're the cool, fresh air. You've made a fresh air fiend out of me, dear. 
And I'm not going back there unless you send me. Then, Hildy, you go right up to Walter Burns and resign. What, and have him get his hands on me? That's why I've been hiding out at your place, to keep away from that double-crossing maniac. Tell you what I'll do. I'll resign by phone and to get a look at that snake's face. Oh, now. no, you don't. Here. What, 501 bill? Uncle sent it to me for a wedding present. I wasn't going to give it to you until we got there. But you take it. And after you take me home, you get the ticket. Instead of getting married tonight, we'll get married tomorrow. Instead of going to New York tomorrow, we go to New York tonight. All we have to do is throw the oil underwear in the trunk 24 hours earlier, that's all. Well, what is it, Mother? Do you know what I think? What? I think you must be a sort of irresponsible type, or you wouldn't do things this way. Now, Mother, you stop picking on my hill. He didn't do a one blessed thing to help our getting away. You better get busy. Okay. Head on the first night I met you. You're the one I care for. Here. Wait a minute. That dress you had on the night you said no? Come here. Give you a farewell party. Thanks. But it hurts, Hildy. You're not telling a fellow after all I've done for you. You mean after all you've done to me? By the time you sent me down to the lake to test that trick diving suit. That suit was about as waterproof as your straw hat. It filled so fast, it took me half an hour to pull me up. It was lucky I only went deaf. Didn't I go to the expense of hiring an airplane to take you up so you could get your hearing back? And at the further expense of bribing the pilot so I landed me in the middle of a strike massacre at Harold, Illinois? You scooped the whole world on the story, you made yourself the envy of every newspaper man alive. Oh, well, it was worth it at that. Even if I did get ridden out of town on the rail, with eight bullet holes in a hat that cost me six bucks. And charged on the expense account at 15. And got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, those were the days. You'll certainly have a lot to tell the kids. Yeah. 
What kids? You're getting married. Well, why not? A guy's got to settle down sometime. Get a home and wife and... They say it's kids that hold it all together. That's right. I was never big enough to let a nice girl reform me so I could stay in a two-room love nest at nights with a wife and kids while the fellas were out having a lot of fun. Oh, dear. Marriage does make a respectable citizen out of a man. It must be grand. None of this idiotic jumping around at all hours and having to be on the inside of all the crazy excitement in this town. Ah, the 515 out to some quiet suburb. A home-cooked dinner every night at exactly seven and by ten in bed. Unless, after the tapioca, the wife has a few friends in for a neighborly chat. I don't blame you, Hildy. It sounds great. Excuse me a minute, will you? Come on here, Sporty. Deal them out, boy. Don't let that deck get full. See if you can deal me a decent hand, will you? Oh, with the shoes? Any news? I just been over to the death house. Did you hear what Williams said to the priest? Oh, forget it. Yeah, I know, I know. The paper's full of the hanging. We ain't got room for the ads. What did Williams say? He said that... Come on, boys. Ante up. Ante up. I've ante twice up. already. He said to the priest that he was innocent. He'll start crying in a minute. Why don't you send the poor nuts some roses like that girl of his, Molly Malloy? Oh, now there you are. There's an idea. She thinks he's innocent, too. Oh, you fellas don't understand. Now, Before I... you go on, wouldn't you? Would you mind running down to the corner and get me a hamburger sandwich? Personally, my feeling is... Make that two hamburgers like a good fellow. Now, my feeling is that Williams is of the dual personality type. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, like the Dolly sister. Yeah, tell it to the Tribune. Three, all right, got two. It's on account of the way his head is shaped. It's a typical case. Sure. Ask him to put a lot of ketchup on them sandwiches. I thought you fellas might be interested in the psychological end. Make mine plain lettuce on gluten bread. Get me a sandwich too, wouldn't you? I raise you. Well, I drop right now. What do you got Where am I going to get the dough for all these eats? Oh, charge it. You got a badge, haven't you? What's it good for? Four hamburgers. And a lettuce. On gluten. <laughs> hell, oh, hello, Mr. Burns. Why, no, we haven't seen Hildy. <laughs> Hi, Slade. Look at you He's trying to shave. It's Walter Burns on the wire. Talk to him, will you, Hildy? Tell that paranoid to take a sweet kiss for himself. Come on, Ernie. Sound your ray. Goodbye forever. Listen, Hildy, will you do me a personal favor and talk to Walter? He's been calling up about nine million times. What's the matter, Hildy? Are you afraid of him? I'll talk to that maniac with pleasure. Hello, Mr. Burns. What's that, Mr. Burns? Why, your language is shocking, Mr. Burns. Say, listen, you crazy baboon, get a pencil and paper and take this down and get it straight, because it's important. This is the Hildy Johnson curse. The next time I see you, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I'm going to walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. Oh, joy. That's telling them. Listen to me. No, I ain't going to cover the hanging. I wouldn't cover Washington Cross in the Delaware for you, not if we did it all over again. Never mind the Vaseline, Jocko. It won't do you any good this time because I'm going to New York. <laughs> I didn't tell you that, did I? And if you know what's good for you, you'll stay west of Gary, Indiana, because the Johnson never forgets. <laughs> and that, boys, is what is known as telling the managing editor. Well, why'd you quit? Getting married. See those three to New York tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir. What do you mean, three? Me and my girl and her darling mom. Oh, look, he's in love. Tootsie, what's uh, Is she a white girl? Has she got a good shape? Does Walter know you're getting married? Does he know? 
Shook hands like a pal, over to throw me a farewell dinner. That's his favorite joke. Farewell dinner. He poisons people at him. Give me Tucker 2164, will you? Yeah, he got me into Pollock Mike's, filled me full of cheap booze. I'd have been there yet if it hadn't been for the window. Can you imagine that guy trying to break up my marriage after shaking hands? Oh, hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? Hmm? Well, I know, but... Oh, you bet I resigned right in his face, didn't I? Yeah. 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 What? 11.18 tonight. The press room. Just dropped in to say goodbye to the boys. Yeah. No, not a chance, honey. I got a taxi waiting. Yeah. Ten minutes. Bye-bye, honey. Hey, where's the wedding? In the yard. So you guys ain't gonna have any fun with it. No fake warrants for kidnapping the bride with me. Everybody's getting the New York craze. I think it's a stinking village. You want to count, Hildy? They tell me all the reporters in New York use lipsticks. Remember that one last summer with that copper? <laughs> oh, there was the man. Could any of you gentlemen tell me where the telegraph office is? You want to count, Hildy? You'll be talking like that. Which one of those New York papers are you going to work for? None of them. Who wants to work in a newspaper? Not a whole boat's full of dandruff and bad gin. They wheedle off of all of them. What are you going in for? The movie? The advertising business. $150 a week. What? 150 what? There's the contract. Have you guys got anything better to do down there? It is 150. You're gonna miss a sweet hanging. Not interesting. He's going to write poetry about my lady's panties. Can you imagine punching a time clock, sitting around with a lot of stuffed shirts, talking statistics? Why, you'll be like a fire horse tied to a milk wagon. Listen to who's talking. Journalists. Peeking through keyholes, running after fire engines like a lot of coach dogs, waking people up in the middle of the night, asking what they think of Mussolini, stealing pictures off of old ladies of their daughters that get attacked in Grove Park, a lot of daffy buttinskis swirling around with holes in their pants, borrowing nickels from office boys. And for what? So a million hired girls and motormen's wives don't know what's going on. Yeah, your girl must have handed you that line. I don't have to have anybody tell me about a newspaper. I've been a newspaper man for 15 years, cross between a bootlegger and a galoofer. If you want to know something, you'll all end up on the copy desk. Gray-headed, humpback slobs, dodging debt collectors when you're 90. You'll be out on the street the minute your contract's up. Not me. My girl's uncle owns the business. Has he got a lot of jacks? Choking him. What do you think he gives us for a wedding present? A dozen doilies. <laughs> $500 in cash. There ain't $500 in cash. There it is. Except what it costs to get those tickets to New York. Ooh. Let me count it. Oh, no, you don't. Just a minute. Just a minute, boys. What about a little bite? Scram. Jenny! Oh, hey, 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 America. Can I wash up now, please? Yes. This place is beginning to smell like a like an owl's foot. Oh, you don't want to wash up on a night like this, Jenny. This is a holiday. Come on, give us a kiss. You will, Lee Johnson. Keep away from me. What's the matter? Ain't I your fella anymore? Oh. Tell you what we'll do, Jenny. You and I will go around and say goodbye to everybody in the building. Oh, but we can't carry this all over. Come on, Jenny. Come on. Hey!
means a million votes. Can we help it if the people rise to support this administration, stand against the Red Menace? Personified by Mr. Earl Williams, a guy who loses the job he's held for 14 years, joins the parade of the unemployed, and because he's goofy from lack of food, waves a red undershirt. Williams is a dangerous radical, and he killed a policeman. Williams is a poor bird who had the tough luck to kill a colored policeman in a town where their colored vote's important. And they're hanging Andy Deaver in the morning. You! Keep your shirt on, Pinky. And I don't want to hear any more of that Pinky stuff. I got a name, see? Peter B. Hartman. Da 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 How about the favor that a uh, certain party is asking? Once and for all, will you hang this person at 5 a.m. instead of 7? It can't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Roy, you can't hang a man in his sleep just to please the newspaper. No, but you can keep postponing the hanging so it'll come just before the election. Yes. With this new alienist coming in, how do we know there'll be a hanging? Yes. What if this professor finds he's insane or something? Yes. Well, they won't find he's insane. No? No, because he ain't. Williams is as sane as I am. Saner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, here's a resume of the situation. The newspapers have got to put their shoulders to the wheel. They've got to impress on these Bolsheviks that a death warrant for Earl Williams is a death warrant for every bomb thrown on American Red in this town. This hanging means more to the people of our fair city today. That's a statement, Jimmy. Why don't you go home? All right, you'll just get scooped. We're going to reform the Reds with a rope. That's our slogan. You can quote me if you want to. Sheriff Hartman pledges... Oh, P. Oyer, we've been printing this chestnut for weeks. Ain't you going to use that? Sure. <laughs> Give me the desk. This is Bensinger. The sheriff refuses to move the hanging up a minute. No, I won't. That hanging's coming off exactly as per schedule. Seven o'clock in the morning and not a minute sooner. There's such a thing as being humane, you know. All right. All right, just wait till you want a favor. Give me a rewrite. <laughs> Jake, new lead on the hanging. And say, Jake, don't use Hartman's name in this at all. Just say the sheriff. Why can't this jerk these guys at a reasonable hour so we can get some sleep? This, uh, this new alienist, Dr. Max J. Egelhofer. That's right, from Vienna. He's going to examine Williams at the request of the uh, United Federation for World Betterment. Oh, my, one of the biggest. Author of that book, The Personality Gland. And where to put it? Got a dime. Just autographed a copy for me. Did he find his initials in your pants, too? Wait. There's more. That doctor's the 14th pair of whiskers they've sent in on this case. Say, those aliens make me sick. All they do is goose you, then send your bill for 500 bucks. Give me the desk. Now, Jake. Here's the situation on the eve of the hanging. Hello, this is Murphy. More slap on the hanging. Thrown around the jail, the municipal buildings, the railroad terminals, and elevated stations to prepare for the expected general uprising of radicals at the hour of execution. Sheriff Hartman's just put 400 more relatives on the payroll to protect the city against the red menace which is leaving Moscow in a couple of minutes. Up a dime. Sheriff Hartman, <coughs> the, the sheriff, has just received four more letters threatening his life which he's going to answer by a series of raids. Prove to the voters that the Red Menace is on the square. Sheriff Hartman has just written himself four more letters threatening his life. Yes, yes, I know he wrote them on account of the misspelling. Well, that's all, Jake. Yeah, except the condemned man ate a hearty dinner. Oh, uh, mock turtle soup, chicken pot pie, hash brown potatoes, combination salad, and pie a la mode. The doomed man ate a hearty meal as follows. 
Noodle soup, roast of beef, sweet of potato, cranberry sauce, strawberry pie, and a great big hunk of pastrami. Statement from who? The sheriff? Or quote him for anything you want. He can't read. Kruger calling. Nothing new on the hanging. And say, Jake, get this in as a big favor for me, will you? The whole meal was furnished by Charlie Apfel. And uh, Apfel, uh, Ap, A for adenoids, P for psychology, F for phenomenon, E for epilepsy, and L for, uh, an L for, uh, lay an egg. Certainly this is Bensinger talking. Well, the proprietor of Apple wants to see you restaurant. That's it, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, shame, shame. Uh, stinky Bensinger's going in for petty graft again. That means a new hat for somebody. I understand that's how Bensinger gets all his clothes. Sure, the greasy spoon gave him that overcoat when George Kidd Cucor swung. <laughs> <laughs> if they ever stop hanging people, he'll probably go naked. Why don't you make a poem out of it, Roy? Hello, Molly. Uh-oh, there's a gleam in her eye. Don't look at me, sweetheart. I never said a word. Hello, Kidd. How's the old tomato can? Short and how are you, Molly? Been looking for you tramps. Kid, those were swell roses you sent, Earl. What do you want done with them tomorrow morning? A lot of wise guys, ain't you? What do you want in here? To tell you what I think of you. All of you. Keep your skirts on. He was worth breaking my fingernails on. I'd tear your face wide open. What's the matter, sweetheart? What are you sore about? Now, wasn't that a swell story we gave you? Yeah. You crumbs have been making a fool out of me long enough. She oughtn't to be allowed in here. Yesterday, I caught her using the drinking cup. I never said I loved Earl Williams and was willing to marry him on the gallows. You made that up. About my being his soulmate and having a love nest with him. You've been sucking around that cuckoo ever since he's been in the death house. Everybody knows you're his affinity. That's a rotten lie. I met Mr. Williams just once in my life. He was wandering around in the rain without his hat and coat on like a sick dog the day before the shooting. I went up to him like any human being would and asked him what was the matter. He told me about being fired after working at the same place for 14 years. I took him up to my room because it was warm there. Oh, <laughs> put that on your Victrola. Just because you want to fill your lying papers with a lot of dirty scandal, you got to torture him. Make a tramp out of me. Got a match? I tell you, he just sat there talking to me all night. Never once laid a hand on me. Uh-oh. In the morning, he went away. And I never saw him again till that day at the trial. Tell us what you told the jury. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, laugh. I'd like to know some curses bad enough for your greasy souls. Sure, I was his witness, the only one he had. Witness? Yes, me, Molly Malloy, a common streetwalker. The only one with nerve enough to stand up for him. That's why you're persecuting me. Because he treated me decent, not like an animal, and I said so. Go into your dance, kid. This is the press room. We're busy. Why don't you go and see your boyfriend? You better hurry. He's left a call for 7 a.m. It's a wonder a bolt of lightning don't come down and strike you all dead. What was that? They're fixing up a pain in the neck for your boyfriend. Oh, oh what's the idea? Oh. oh, no, no. Don't don't get hysterical. Oh, shame on you. Why, I didn't say anything. A poor crazy little guy. Never did anybody any harm. Sitting out there alone this minute with the angel of death beside him. And you, Crockett, too. Say, listen, if you don't shut up, I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, keep your dirty hands off of Come me. On, you don't have to push outside. Outside, Sam. Come on, get, get out of here. Get, get out. Take it on the lamb. You say for this with your greedy soul. Well, do you guys want to play some more poker? Uh. Here now, tickets for the hanging. Two for each paper. What do you mean, two? What do you want to do, take your family? Uh, hey, listen, Pete, The I... boss wants a couple for the advertising department. I promised to pay This it. ain't the follies, you know. 
big-hearted pinky. I'm getting tired of your editors using these tickets to get advertising accounts. You've got a lot of nerve. Everybody knows you use them to get in socially. Yeah, you had the whole Union League Club over at the last hanging. Trying to suck in with the swells, huh? I suppose you'll wear a monocle tomorrow morning. Now, boys, that ain't the way to talk. If any of you want a couple of extra tickets, I'll be more than glad to take care of you. But for goodness sake, don't kill me. Hiya, boys. We cleaned up. Here, here, here. Get that copy of the Morning Post out of here. Look here, Johnson. What do you mean by throwing things out of the window? Johnson, what do you mean by throwing things out of the window? Who do you think you are? Who wants to know? You think that you and Walter Burns are around this town? Well, I'm going to send a bill to the Post tomorrow for all the wreckage been committed around here in the last year. Now, how do you like that? That's swell. You know what else you can do? What? Guess. <laughs> if you stick your nose in this building tomorrow, I'll have you arrested. Well, that's almost worth staying for. And I'll tell you something else, and you can pass it on to Walter Burns. The Post get no tickets for this hanging on account of the lies that they've been printing. Say, listen, you pot roast, if I want to go to your hanging out, go see, and I'll sit in a box. Oh, no, you won't. You only have to tell half of what I know. You don't know anything. I have to know who occupied room 602 at a certain hotel the night before the last hanging. <laughs> that hotel crack just doubled him up. <laughs> Say, Sheriff. Restroom. Just what hotel was that? For you, Sheriff. Sheriff Hoffman talking. Oh, hello, dear. It must be Irma. No, I can't come home. I got too many things to do. Getting ready for the hanging. Why don't you take him out to your house and hang him? I'll call you up later, Irma. It is Irma. I got to see an alienist. No. Alienist. Not for me, for William. <laughs> Press room. Who? Oh. Hey, Hildy, your girl. Hello, you. Hello, Peggy. How are you, down? Yay, sandwiches. How about my plate letters? Hamburger for me. I ordered one, didn't I? You did not. This way, wooden shoes. Why, darling, what's the matter? I distinctly said gluten. Listen, darling, I just dropped in to say goodbye to the fellas. Do you remember I told you? Say, will you guys talk or something? All right. All right. All right. Yes, I've got a taxi waiting. Hey, go easy on that ketchup. I'm responsible for it. Sweetheart, I've got the tickets right in my pocket. Now listen, dear, if you talk like that, I'm going to go right out and jump in the lake. I swear I will, because I can't stand it. Listen. We're listening. I love you. I said I love you. Oh, give him a break, Ernie. Well, that's more like it. You feel better now? Well, smile. Say something. Well, you know what I want to hear. Tell me you love me. Come on, tell me you love me. Tell him you love him and we'll all go to sleep. That's the stuff. Yep. Listen, honey, will you wear that little blue straw hat? Wait a minute, I'll see. Well, are you happy now? Well, I bet you're not as happy as I am. Well, I bet you anything you want. All right, dear. Yeah. Five minutes. Bye-bye. Hildy, here's Warner again. Tell him to give us a rest, will you? Oh. Say, so you're just making a nuisance out of yourself. What's the idea calling up on the... What? No, I'm through with newspapers. I'm going to New York tonight, right now, this minute. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, Pinky! Stick that among your souvenirs! Hey, Hilda, you'll get us in an awful jam! Listen, if Walter calls up again, tell him to put it in writing and send it to Hildebrand Johnson, Waterbury Adams Corporation, 735 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Please, Sherry. Huh? Please. Oh, excuse me, Professor. I ain't afraid to die. I ain't afraid. Don't work too much the first day, kid. Goodbye, Johnson. I'll drop your line, Hildy, and let you know what Walter says. So long, Hildy. Be careful of that treacherous New York weather, Hildy. So long, Tramp. Don't forget to send us a postal card. Don't forget to drop in and see us if you ever come back, kid. Well, we see you again, Hildy. Riding in a Rolls Royce. Giving out interviews on successy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we shall reenact the crime. Uh, have you a gun, Sheriff? 
Done. Now imagine that I am the policeman. You understand? I am the policeman. Now where exactly did you stand? Show me. Hey, Hilly, I hope you got a return trip ticket. You'll be back next week. And then what did you do? Dementia free Goodbye, you wage slaves. When you're crawling up fire escapes, getting kicked out of front doors, eating Christmas dinners and one-armed joints, don't forget your old pal, Hilly Johnson. As the road beyond unfolds, It's a jailbreak! Hey, did you call me? What's the matter? What's happened? Look out where you're aiming, will you? Watch the gate! I'll be trying to get! Who got away? Who was it? Well, William! Well, William! Hey, I can get it. Hurry! Hurry up! This is important! Give me the desk! Jailbreak! Call your back! Uh, William's just escaped! Call your back! I don't know yet! Look out! William just went over the wall! Look, Charlie. Hey, Waters, quick! Hello, Waller. Hilly, get this. Earl Williams just landed out of the county jail. Yep, yep, yep. Don't worry, Waller, I'm on the job right. No, no one knows where he got the gun. He ran up eight flights of stairs to the infirmary and got out through the skylight. He must have slid down the rain pipe to the street. Murphy, give me the desk. No, I tell you, no one knows where he got it. Call you back. No clue yet to Earl Williams' whereabouts. The Crime Commissioner is offering a $10,000 reward for the capture of Earl Williams. Call you back. Hello? Hello, here's a feature for you. Tear bomb. Yes, yes, tear bomb. Criminals cry for it. If the mayor wants me, he knows where I am. This bomb went off accidentally in the hands of Sheriff Hartman's bombing squad. What went off? The following deputy sheriffs were taken to the emergency hospital. A fine fellow with a friend you are. Honey, Jake Glazer. After all I've done for you. Herman Wallstein. Putting things like that in the paper. Sidney Matsberg. That's gratitude for you. And Danny Koo. Kruger calling. McHugh, give me the desk. A man answering Williams' description was seen boarding a southbound Cottage Grove Avenue car by motorman Julius A. Lindbergh. Side lights on the manhunt. Yeah, Lindbergh. I thought it'd make a swell feature on account of the name. Mrs. Richard Watts, Jr., age 55, scrub lady. While at work scrubbing the eighth floor of the Commerce Building, was shot in the left leg by one of Sheriff Hartman's special deputies. I'll <laughs> rush right <laughs> after it. <laughs> another scrub lady. Can he go get in how he get out? All I can get the sheriff let him out so he can fought for him. Where do you suppose Williams got that gun? Give me Walter Burns, quick! Hello, Walter. Hildy. I just got the whole story from Jacoby. Exclusive? Right, and it's a pip. Only get this, it cost me 260 bucks, see? Don't waste time, give me the story. I'm telling you. First, I had to give Jacoby all the money I had on me, and it wasn't exactly mine, and I want it back. How'd he get the gun? You hear what I said about the money? Yes, go on. All right, then. Boy, this is the jailbreak of your dreams. This profound thinker from Vienna decided to make Williams reenact the crime. Well, well, well. Well, I'm coming to it. Will you shut up? Of course, he had to have a gun to reenact it with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Who? Peter B. Hartman, B for brains. No, I'm not kidding. The sheriff gave his gun to the professor, the professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the belly. 
The professor's in the hospital, Williams has evaporated, and the sheriff's gone nuts. Ain't it perfect? <laughs> Fine work, Hildy. Save the violets. I want that money. 260 bucks. No, I tell you, I'm not going to cover anything else. I'm going away. Listen, that's the money I'm going to get married on. I just did this as a personal favor. I'm going to leave town tonight. What? Listen, I gave Jacoby every cent I had at... What? Well, all right, when will you send it over? <laughs> right away. Well, well, tell him to hurry. I'll wait for him here. Okay. Oh, hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? What was that? Oh, I was just telling Walter I was through, that's all. You haven't done something foolish with our money. Oh, no, no. Then I think I'd better take care of it from now on. Oh, now, listen, sweetheart, everything's going to be perfectly all right. Then you haven't got it. Well, no, not right now, but he's going to send it over. Walter, I mean, the boy will be here any minute. Walter, oh, Hildy. Listen, honey, I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. Look, this is what happened. I was... I know. Well, I can't tell you if you won't listen. But I had to give Jacoby the money so he wouldn't give the story to the other papers. Every time I've wanted you for something. My birthday. New Year's Eve when I waited up to five in the morning. Oh, I know, but a big story broke. It's always a big story. The biggest story in the world. And the next day, everybody's forgotten it, even you. What do you mean, forgotten? That was the Clara Hammond murder on your birthday. Oh, for heaven's sake, Peggy, it won't hurt to wait just a few minutes, and the boy's on his way with the money now. Mother's downstairs in a taxi. I'm just ashamed to face her. If she knew about that money, it's all we've got in the world, Hildy. We haven't even got a place to sleep except the train. Listen, honey, I'll tell you what we'll do. You and Mother go and have the baggage checked. There are the tickets. You mean you're not coming? Sure, I'm coming. I'll meet you at the information booth. It's all that Walter Burns. You simply can't resist him. Him, I wouldn't raise a finger if he was dying. McHugh talking. Oh, hello, Mac. Dear, this is Mr. McHugh. Mac, this is my girl. Pleased to meet you. Here's a feature on the manhunt that'll knock you right on you. Excuse me, miss. Wait a second, honey. Mrs. Phoebe DeWolf, 861 and a half South Euclid Street, colored. Well, she became the mother of a pickaninny in a patrol wagon with Sheriff Hartman's rifle squad acting as nurses. <laughs> oh, you should have seen him, miss. <laughs> Come on, dear, we'll put our things in the cab. <laughs> well, Phoebe was walking along the street when all of a sudden she began... Right. So they coaxed her into the patrol wagon and started a race with the stork. When the pickaninny was born, the rifle squad examined him carefully to see if it was Earl Williams, who they knew was hiding somewhere. <laughs> they named the kid Peter Hartman de Wolf in honor of the sheriff. <laughs> and they all pitched in a dollar apiece on account of it being the first baby ever born on a manhunt. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's the mayor himself. Maybe there's a statement. Don't pester me now, please. I have a lot on my mind. His order won't say anything. Have you seen Sheriff Hartman? No. What effect's this jailbreak going to have on the colored voters? Not an iota. In what way can an unavoidable misfortune of this sort influence the duty of every citizen, colored or otherwise? Ah, oh, you're right. Tell me, is there a red menace or ain't there? Hartman, I've been looking for you. So are we. What's the dough, Pinky? Who engineered this getaway? Just a minute, fellas. We got him located. Williams? Where? Where he used to live. The rifle squad just starting out. You can catch him if you hurry. Hey! I want to talk to you. I ain't got time, Fred. Honest. I I'll see you after. Hey! Did you actually give Williams that gun? Well, the professor asked me for it. I thought it was for something scientific. Hey! Uh Kruger calling. Here's a red-hot statement from the governor. The governor says the mayor and the sheriff have shown themselves to be a couple of eight-year-olds playing with fire. Quote them as follows. It's a good thing for the city that next Tuesday is election day, as the citizens will thus be saved the expense of impeaching the mayor and the sheriff. That's all. Hi, Your Honor. Eight. I've got a mighty unpleasant task to perform. You're just going to get me rattled, Fred. Been 400 deputies. Do you want to bankrupt this administration? But I'm getting them for only $12 a night. $12 for those rheumatic uncles of yours. Out there shooting up everybody they can see for the fun of it. But, Fred. 
Pete, you're through. Now, don't appeal to my sentimental side. I don't know what to say, Fred. A, a thing of this kind almost ruins a man's faith in human nature. Pete! And our families, Fred. I've always looked on Bessie as my own sister. If there was any way out. But there is a way out. Uh, just give me a couple hours, will you? <laughs> Hello. 400 suppers, nothing doing. This is a manhunt, not a banquet. That $12 covers everything. That gives you an idea what I'm up against. We're up against a lot more than that with that nutty slogan you invented. Reform the Reds with a rope. Is there an apartment in there? It's for me. I'm Sheriff Hartman, you looking for me? You certainly are a hard man to find. Hmm? I've been looking... What do you want? I'm a messenger at the State House. This is from the governor. What's from the governor? The reprieve for Earl Williams. For whom? Earl Williams, the reprieve. Mm. And the governor gave me his word of honor that he wouldn't interfere two days ago. And you fell for it. Pete, it frightens me what I'd like to do to you. He's gone. Wooden shoes. Was there anybody here for me? No, Mr. Johnson. Oh, that double-crossing louse. Everything will be all right. Now, don't worry. All we want to do is to ask you a couple of questions. The trouble is nobody's using the right psychology of... You got 260 bucks? No, sir. But I got a way of making it. And more. Search a la femme. What? Who is it that's been defending Williams? Hanging around. Oh, I ain't got time for that trip. I gotta get 260 bucks in the next five minutes. It'll take longer than five minutes to get it. I know where Williams is. Sure, he's out getting his head blown off with a rifle squad, but that don't get me my dough. He's with that girl, Molly Malloy. That's where... Oh, shut up! Remember, you never delivered this. You got caught in the traffic jam or something. Don't let anybody see you. Yeah, but how do I know? Come and see me at my office tomorrow. What is your name? Pincus. All right, Mr. Pincus. Now, all you've got to do is to lay low and keep your mouth shut. Here. You go to this address. It's a nice, homey little place, and you can get anything you want. Tell them Fred sent you. OK, Fred. You imagine wooden shoes? This time tomorrow, I'd have been a gentleman. At last, Louis, you got the dough. Huh? She sent him a lot of roses, didn't she? Yeah. Stick your roses. Come on, Louie, I'm in a hurry. I'll bet you I'm right. Oh, you... No, not you. Hey, look, what are you talking about? Did Walter send you over here? Sure, in case you need any help. Yeah, you know I, mean? I know, but the 260 bucks. What the 260 bucks? The money I spent on the story. Walter promised to send it over, but I can't wait, so... So what? Listen, Louie, you always got a lot of dough on you. Oh, so you want it from me, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's a lot of money, you know what I mean? Oh, Louie, my whole future depends on this. My girl's waiting at the train. We're going to New York tonight. I've only got 15 minutes. If you help me out, miss, I swear that I'll... Look, look. Walter is going to give it to me the works. He'll leave if I help you turn out on him. No, no, he knows I'm going. I just did him a swell favor and we're pals again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'm going to take the chance. Oh, that's the stuff. I want enough for you to get the water and you can get the money from him. I You're a white man, Louie. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 150 bucks for the debt. Hey, wait a minute. That's taking advantage. Well, it's the best of what I can do. Because I lose almost 100 bucks that way. That's 110 you lose it. Hey, Louie, give me 200, will you? 150. All right, give me the dough. There you is. Hey, look, what he says on here? Well, you read what he says on there. Oh, sure, that's right. Well, goodbye and good luck. Oh, I'm going to look you up in New York if there's anything wrong with this. You know what I mean? Ten, twenty, thirty, four. Ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty. Ten, twenty. Oh, well, anyway, I get out of this place. They... After me. With searchlights. Put down that gun. It ain't loaded. I fired all the bullets already. Oh, 
I surrender. I couldn't hang off of the roof any longer. I ain't afraid to die. I was telling the fellow that when he handed me the gun. Waking me up in the middle of the night. Talking to me about things they don't understand. Calling me a Bolshevik. I'm an anarchist. It's got nothing to do with bombs. It's the philosophy that guarantees every man freedom. All those poor people being crushed by the system. And the boys, the boys that were killed in the war and in the slums. All of those slaves to a crust of bread. I can hear them crying. Shut up a second, will you? Go on. Go on, take me back. Hang me. I've done my best. Give me Walter Burns, quick. Yeah, right. Hello. Oh, hello, Peggy. Now listen, dear, please, something terrific has happened. Don't start to phone me out now. Wait a minute, will you? Hello, Walter. Listen, Hildy, come over here right away. Hold the line a minute. Now listen, Peggy, please, now I'm in an awful jam. Don't start to phone me out now, please, honey. Wait a minute, will you? Walter, get this. I can only say this once. I just captured Earl Williams here in the press room. Yeah, honest, hurry over here. I need you. Right. Hello, Peggy, please. Listen, dear, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Wait till I tell you. I just captured Earl Williams, the murderer. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. Please don't tell anybody, honey. I know. But listen, something terrific has happened. It's the greatest thing of my life, honey. Wait. Hold on. I, never uh... Wait a minute, Molly. They got him surrounded someplace. Going to shoot him like a dog. Get out of here, Molly. They're looking for you two of your smarts. So get out of here. Tell me where they've gone. I ain't afraid of them, the yellow murderers. Lincoln, Lincoln them first. Oh. Shh. Who is it? Me. I've got a clue. I'll be right with you, wooden shoes. Get back in there. What is this? A double cross? I'm trying to save him. This is very important. Keep him quiet. Now, that's a cop, and I'll get rid of him. Hello, wooden shoes. Thank you for the roses, Molly. How'd you get here? I came down the rain pipe. I didn't mean to shoot him. I don't know what happened. But you can't stay here. They'll get you. I don't care anymore. You gotta hide. Rats. No, don't do anything. I'm ready to go. I don't care. It's better to die for a cause than the way most people die, for no reason. Oh, you won't die. They'll never get you. I ain't important. It's humanity that's important. Like I told you, Molly, humanity is a wonderful thing. No, it ain't. They're just dirty murderers. Look what they've done to you and to me. And that's because they don't know any better. You're too good for them, that's why. You're, you're good too. Me? Yeah, I think you're wonderful. I wrote out a statement a day and left it with the warden. So that when I was dead, people would understand what I meant. There was a lot about you in it. I said you were the most beautiful character I ever met. Yeah? So this is the time for you to print my theory of crime prevention. Okay, you run along and write it out for me. And hurry up, will you? Back in there. The fellas are coming. They'll find you. There's no place else. Shh. Who locked the door? Coming, Mike. He's got to get back in there. Oh. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Okay. What's going on in there? What going on, dog? Get you out in ten minutes. Open up in there, will you? All right, all right. Come on, please. They'll find me anyway. Keep quiet. Don't even breathe. I'll be right here. You'll be. Hey! What were you trying to do? Kick down the building? Kind of exclusive, ain't you? Molly! Oh, I beg your pardon. City desk. What's the idea of locking the door? Well, I was interviewing The him. desk. What is he doing on it? With the blinds down. Oh, well, you fellas don't understand. You still here? Boy, some Halloween going on out there. They got the whole police department standing on the rear. Murphy calling. Give me the desk. Any news? I was never so tired in my life. They surrounded the house, but Williams wasn't there. No luck on Williams yet. Call you back. Oh, what a chase. Commissioner Train? Kruger calling. I'm out with Sheriff Hartman's deputies. Yeah, I'm at a drugstore. Well, call me back if you don't believe me. Come on, 
And come on, operator. Fitzroy, two five hundred. Molly, can't you flop somewhere else? Mmm, smell. Mmm. Floor de floozy. <laughs> Makes me passionate. Look out, she'll start bawling again. Well, why don't you let her alone? Say, when did you two get so chummy? Told us he was interviewing her. You back on the job again? Uh, hello, Sarge. McHugh. Anything doing? You still here? I'm trying to hang something on us, if you ask me. Well, now I'm waiting for Walter. He promised to send a guy over with some dough. Hey, this looks good. An old lady just phoned the detective bureau and claims Earl Williams is hiding under her piazza. Tell her to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the same, fellas. That sounds like a pretty good tip. Shall we go out on it? Oh. Yeah. Say, I'll cover this end for you. Don't let's do any more going out. Who pulled the shades down? Molly likes it that way. Hey, I got a hunch Williams ain't any place they've been looking for him. He might be right here in this building. Sure, hanging around like a duck in a shooting gallery, I suppose. Bright guys. Now, there's the skylight he got out of. But how could he get from there to the ground? I'm pretending the raid in the Earl Williams. Look, he'd have jumped over to this roof. That's only about four feet. Yeah, once he got on this roof, he could slide down the rain pipe and come in any of the windows on this side. Well, if the story's going to walk right in the window... Well, the mastermind's at work. While all you guys go home, Williams will probably call on you. Well, there must be something in what Ed says. Or well, they'd certainly have nabbed Williams by now. The whole city's inside out looking for him. Well, if he came in this building, it's a cinch she's still here. There hasn't been a chance for a flea to get through those cops downstairs. Unless it's one that fell off of the sheriff. What's happened? Oh, you're still here, Johnson. <laughs> Thought you were going to New York. <laughs> Is this the only place you can find to sit in? This chair and this desk are my property. And I won't have anybody using it. Anybody. What are you looking for, Roy? I forgot my aspirin. Oh, you don't want to get aspirin. It's bad for your heart. It is really? Yes. I've noticed palpitations every time I've taken some. What's the matter, Roy? You're sick? Sick. Say, if I haven't got the grip coming on, I miss my guess. Get some tonsilline. Tonsilline? Yep. Never heard of it. Is that any good? Oh, it's great. It broke up my call in five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes? Yep. What was the name? Tonsilline. T for taffy, O for oxen, N for nuts. Get the tonsilline. I know how to spell it. Any drugstore? Any drugstore. I'll get me some. Oh, that drinking cup. <clears throat> well, I wish water would get here. My dough. <clears throat> hey, speaking about dough, there's a ten grand reward for that guy, Williams. Let's get the cops and search the building. What do you say? Hey, wouldn't it be funny if we found him right here in the building? Supposing he is here in the building. The cops would grab the reward. We wouldn't get a smell. That's right. Listen, let's all grab a floor. Whoever finds him, we'll split the reward. I'll stay here. Uh, I don't know about that. Getting my sunset blown off. Well, what else is it good for? Besides, he can't hurt anybody. Oh, come on, Mac. Well. Now, listen, Mother. Don't you mother me. If you've got anything to say for yourself, after keeping us at that station all this time, you come downstairs and say it to Peggy. Peggy, I'll be there in five minutes. No, sir. I don't move out of here without you. But I already told Peggy I know. A lot of gibberish about a murderer. No, I... I don't care if you did catch him. You come with me this moment. What? I knew something stunk around here. Who says he caught him? What do you mean you caught a murderer? I don't know what she's talking about. I didn't say anything of the kind. Yes, you did. He never told her that. Oh, I said I was trying to catch him. You see, mother, you got it all balled up. What do you know about it? How do you know we didn't? Let go! Kildy and she were here together. Yeah. She's the one that knows. What do you mean? Saché La Femme. Where is Daryl Williams? How should I know? Where is he? Who are you holding out of? Come clean before we knock it out of here. Sorry, Jimmy! Who are you trying to cross? Wait! You stool pigeons! He doesn't know where Williams is. I'm the one that knows. What do you mean, you know? Go find out, you heels. You don't think I'm going to tell? We'll make you. Let her alone. She's goofy. She ain't too goofy to know where Williams is. Look out! Close that door! Oh, no, no. You ain't getting out of here. Now where is it? Where are you hiding? I ain't going to squeal. I ain't going to. You're going to tell her we'll shake it out of you. Want to have us call the cops and give you the boots? Come on, wouldn't you? Slap it out of her. Where is he? Before I hurt you. Don't you come near me, you kidney butt. Keep away! Keep away from me! I'll knock your heads off! 
Put down that chair. Get her out. Get on the side of her. No, you don't. You'll never get it out of me. I'll never tell. Never. Drop her. She ain't dead. Come to, Hildy. Where do you get William? Uh, he's in the desk. Oh, the poor kid. Let me out. I can't stand it. Keep quiet. You're sitting pretty. What's the matter? Who's that? That's my girl's mother. What are you doing? Shut up. I won't shut up. That girl killed herself. Oh, you're doing something wrong. What's in there? Louis, take this lady over to Polak Mike's and lock her up. And see that she doesn't talk to anyone on the way. What's that? What's that? Take her out the back way. Tell Mike it's a case of delirium tremens. Oh, this is going to get me in a terrible jam. Oh, sure. Anything you say, boss. Now, don't worry, Mother. This is only temporary. Where do you think you're going? I'm going out and get my girl. Your girl? What are you, some puling college boy? Why, in time of war, you could be shot for what you're doing now, for less. Screw, there's your story. Smeared all over the front page. Earl Williams caught by the morning post and take all the credit. I covered your story and I covered it right. Now I'm getting out of here. Why, you drooling saphead, what do you mean a story? You've got the whole city by the seat of the pants. I know, but... You know, you've got the brain of a pancake. Listen, Hildy, if I didn't have your interest at heart, would I be wasting time arguing with you now? You've done something big. You stepped into a new class. What? Why, we'll make such monkeys out of those war healers that nobody will vote for them, not even that wise. Expose them, huh? Crucify them. We're going to keep Williams under cover till morning so the Post can break the story exclusive. Then we'll let the governor and the captain share the glory with them. I see, I see. You kicked over the whole city hall like an apple cart. You've got the mayor and Hartman backed against the wall. You put one administration out and another one in. Why, this isn't a newspaper story, it's a career. And you stand there belly aching about some girl. Well, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it that way, I guess. We be the white-haired boys, don't we? Why, they'll be naming streets after you. Johnson Street. You and I and the governor are going to run this yeah, town. Yeah, we can't keep Williams here. One I'm of the fellows... carry him over to my private office. Where's our telephone? That one. Right over there. How are you going to take him out? They'll see him. Not if he's inside the desk, we'll carry it over. Can't do that. A swarm with cops outside. We'll lower out of the way with police. Hildy, what? snap into it. Grab the machine, start finding out a lead. How much you want? All the words you got. Where's the paper? Hello, give me Duffy. Hello. Can I call the mayor down at bay? Call him a lunch child if you want. Duffy, how about the time he had his house painted by the fireman? Give him the works. Hello, Duffy. Get set. We've got the biggest story in the world. Earl Williams caught for the post exclusive. Send word down to Butch McGirt. I want ten huskies to lamb right over here. Rest room, criminal court building. Butch will get that desk out. Nothing's ever stopped those boys. Look at that shooting. Fine. Now listen, Duffy. I want you to tear out the whole front page. That's what I said. The whole front page. Out. Johnson's writing the lead. Hildy! What the devil do you want? Hildy! Miss, you can't come in here. Take the Chinese earthquake. Wait a minute, Duffy. Now look here, little girl. You're doing this to him. He was going and you stopped him. Listen, dear, something terrific has happened. I was going to tell you, but I couldn't. Tell her nothing. She's a woman, you fool. I'm not going to let you do it. You're coming right now. Holy jumping. Darling, this is the biggest chance of my life. Keep quiet. You don't want to marry me, that's all. That isn't true. Just because you won't listen to me or say I don't love you. When you know I'd cut off my hands, boy, I'd do anything for you, anything in the world. What, Duffy? What? Jump the League of Nations. Fake it. You never intended to be decent and live like a human being. You were lying all the time. Well, all right, then, if that's what you hey, think. Hey, Sebastian, jumping on. Try to concentrate. Oh, I see what you are now. Just a rotter. Like him. Sure, that's what I am. No, leave the rooster story alone. That's human interest. You're just a heartless, selfish animal without any feeling. It's all your fault. And if you think I'm going to put Shut it... up, will you? Let me talk to Butch. Sure, that's what I am, a rotter, and that's all I ever want to be. Well, then get hold of Butch as fast as you can. You never did love me. Oh, you could talk to me like that. You want me? You'll have to take me as I am instead of trying to make a floozy out of me. I'm no stuffed shirt writing peanut ads. I'm a newspaper man. Let it come, Hildy, fast. Get back in there, you Mark Colonel! It isn't gone in yet? Well, don't. Never mind the mail trains. You're not working for the advertising department. Keep on this wire. Oh, nuts! Stay on the phone. And now the moon's out.
Fine. Three taps is me. Don't forget. You're sitting pretty now. Got enough air? That bird? Find it, Gnome Hilly. Every punch below the belt. Hello. Duffy, where have you been? Never mind your diabetes. Keep on this phone. Listen, did you impress it on Bush to take a taxi? Did every minute counts? You did? All right. Duffy's getting old. Where is Bush? He's out of the way. Better hurry. The fellows will be coming back to phone. How is she? Don't know yet. What's your lead, Hildy? While hundreds of Sheriff Hartman's paid gunmen stalked through the city shooting innocent bystanders, spreading their reign of terror, Earl Williams was lurking less than 20 yards from the no. Sheriff's Club. That stinks. Aren't you going to mention the post? Don't we take any credit? I got that in the second paragraph. Who's going to read the second paragraph? Fifteen years I've been telling you how to write a newspaper story. Have I got to do everything? Get the story, write the story. Listen, you crazy bad boy, I could sneeze better newspaper stories than you can write. You ought to go back to chasing pictures. You were good at that. Well, you ungrateful windbag. Who wrote the Fitzgerald confession? Who wrote the Ruth Randall diary? How about the Dayton flood? Even the telegraph operator was crying. Make me cry now. Duffy, what's the name of that religious editor of ours? The fellow with the dirty collar. Sipper what? Well, tell Sipperty I want to see him right away. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Talk yourself to death. Yes. I'm going to get Sipperty to make up a prayer for our fair city in eight column, old English bold face, right across the top of the paper. Our father, there were 421 murders in this our fair city last year. All in religious lingo, see? Our father, what a prayer. What an idea. Uh-huh. You better pray that desk will float over to your office. Wait, wait, wait. I've got an inspiration. Now, here's your lead. Take this down just as I say it. Someday you're going to do that, and I'm going to belt you right in the jaw. The Post again rode to the rescue of the city last night in the darkest hour of her history. Earl Williams. Earl Williams, the Bolshevik tiger leaped snarling from the gallows upon the flanks of the city. He was captured. I got you, I got you. Go on from there. Who's that? Who's that? What's the idea in locking this door? That's Benzinger. That's his desk. What's his name? Benzinger. The Tribune. I'll handle him. Come on, come on, come on. Watch me. The idea in locking that door. Haven't you, haven't you any better sense at all? This isn't a private room, and you ought to know better. Oh, Mr. Burns. Oh, my. It's quite an honor having you over here. Hello, Benzinger. Uh, yes. If you'll excuse me, please, I just want to get my... Quite a coincidence, my running into you tonight. Isn't it, Hildy? Yeah. Well, how do you mean? I was just having a little chat about you this afternoon. That's nice. Oh. <laughs> With our Mr. Duffy. Oh, really? <laughs> Nothing detrimental, I hope. Well, I should say not. Say, that was one swell story you had in the paper this morning. Oh, you liked that, did you? <laughs> did you like the poem? The poem? Oh, the poem was great. Oh, wasn't it? Well, especially that ending. And all is well outside his cell, but in his heart he hears the hangman calling and the gallows falling and his white-haired mother's tears. Heartbreaking. Isn't it? How would you like to work for me? Well, what? We need somebody like you. All we've got over there now are not a low brows and leg men like Johnson here. <laughs> You serious, Mr. Burns? My dear Bensinger. Uh, Duffy, I'm sending Bensinger over to see you. Uh, Mervyn, isn't it? Roy. Roy V. <laughs> Roy Bensinger, the poet. Uh, put him right on the staff. What are you getting in the Tribune, Roy? 75. I'll give you 100 in a byline. Give him everything he wants. Now, hustle. Yes, sir. And write me a story from the point of view of the escaped man. He hides. Cowering, afraid of every light, of every sound. He hears footsteps, his heart going like that. And all the time, they're closing in. Get the sense of an animal at bay. Uh, 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 a sort of a Jack London style. Exactly. Yes, sir. Uh, I wonder if you'll excuse me. I just want to get my rhyming dictionary. It doesn't have to rhyme. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't tell you, Mr. Burns, how terribly grateful I am. Yes, sir. <laughs> you don't suppose sometime there might be an opening for a foreign correspondent? I poly a little French, you know. I'll keep you in mind, Roy. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Au revoir, mon capitaine. Bon jour. Oh, uh, oh Jawa. Oh. <laughs> White-haired mother's tears. Duffy, get this. The Tribune sneak is coming over to get a job. Bensinger, the fellow I told you about. Tell him to get busy writing poetry. No, we don't want him. Handle him with kid gloves till he gets through, then tell him his poetry stinks and kick him downstairs. Well, you double-crossing rat. That will teach him not to quit his job without giving notice. Morning Post building, quickly. 
Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Taxi! Taxi! Yes, Dobby, stick on this wire. Tell him, will you not feel like a frozen robin? Oh, you've just jazzed up my whole life, that's what you've done. You ought to have all plans set when Butch gets here. Butch. He'd go through fire for me. Fine horses bustle I turned out to be. No, oh, the window's out. We'll have to carry it out of the building. Gee, she was the most wonderful girl I'll ever know. She had looks, brains, spirit, and everything. Who are you talking about? My girl, who do you think? Mumbling about your girl now? You've got a story to write. I practically chased her out like she was some pickup. You acted like a man for the first time in your life. I'll never love anybody else. They don't come twice like that in a man's life. Mm, you'll sleeve it off. Gee, when she was sick in the hospital and you sent me on that wild goose chase all over Kentucky, she never even complained. <laughs> sick in the hospital. Well, she was. She nearly died. I see. She never complained. She just nearly died. Gee, this time tomorrow I'd have been on the train. I'd have been on my way to New York. And I'd have been as heavy. I was in love once. With my third wife. I treated her white. Let her have a maid and everything. I was sweet to oh, her. who wants to hear about your wife? I trusted her. Then I later let her meet a certain party in the Tribune and what happened? One night I came home unexpectedly. I let myself in through the bedroom window. End of story. I don't want to hear about your troubles. And the very next morning, what do I read in the Tribune? All over the front page. My traction story that I'd been fool enough to tell my wife. Hey, you know a lot about when you do. You and that stable you keep. You never met a decent woman. You wouldn't know what to do with a pure girl. Oh, yes, I would. You take that back! What do you think women are? Flowers? Now, take that dame that shot the dentist. And Mrs. Vermilia. Husband comes home all worn out, hungry, takes a spoonful of soup and falls over dead. Arsenic. And Mrs. Petrus burning her husband up in the furnace. Oh, Hildy. When you've been in this business as long as I have, you'll know what women are. Murderers. Borges. Boy, I'm a sap falling for your line of... Johnson Street. You've had a good rest. Get back on the story. Here, you're just nervous. Sure, I'll take that. I'll get stewed tonight and I'll stay stewed for the rest of my life. I'll be a newspaper man right in your class. On my bustle in a monkey cage. Shut up, you fathead. Who is it? Hello. Boss. It's Louie. What's the matter? Where's the old lady? What'd you do with her? What happened? Been the fight? Down Western Avenue, 35th Street. We were scoring 65 miles an hour, you know what I mean? Take that much out of your mouth. Where's the old lady? I'm telling you. We ran a smack into a police patrol, you know what I mean? We caught him in a house. Oh, was she hurt? Tell me, where is she? Louie. I'm telling you. Can you imagine bumping into a lot of cops? They come rolling out to like the orange. What'd you do with her? Oh, search me. When I come to, I was rolling down 35th Street. But you were with her. You were in the cab with her, weren't you? Yeah, was I? The taxi driver, he's got to knock cold. Butterfingers. I'll give you an old lady to take somewhere and you hand her over to the cops. What do you mean, I hand? The police patrol was on the wrong side of the street and there you got it. Now everything's fine. She's probably squawking her head off in some police station. I don't think she's talking much. You know what I mean? Oh, don't tell me. Was she killed? Was she? Did you notice? Say, with that rap what I got against me and the bank job and the big blow right here, I should stick around asking her questions from a lot of cops. Oh, sure. Dead. Well, that finishes me. That's fate, Hildy. What will be, will be. Oh, shoo. Well, what am I going to tell Peggy? What am I going to say to her? You'll never see her again. Now snap out of it. Would you rather have had the old lady dragging the whole police force in here? But I killed her. I did. What am I going to do? How am I ever going to face her? Look at you. Look at me. I'm looking at you, you murderer. If it was my own mother, I'd carry on. You know I would. For the paper. Wait, wait, why did it happen? Because I'm going out. You stay here. I'll find out about everything. Western and 34th. Hello, hello. Give me Western, 4557. Who? Oh, hello, Butch. Where are you? Mission Hospital. What are you doing there? Haven't she even started? Was there an old lady boy there from an honest smash up? Oh, for H. Sebastian Butch. Listen, it's a matter of life and death. Listen. Nobody? I can't hear. You got who? Speak up. A what? Oh, you can't stop for a dame now. Is this a community hospital? Butch, I don't care if you've been trying for six years. Our whole lives are at stake. Are you going to let some round heel blonde ruin everything? Hello, Eddie. Billy Johnson. I'd put my arm in fire for you. Up to here. Now, you can't double cross me. She does. All right. Put her on. I'll talk to her. Hello. 
Oh, hello, madam. Now listen, tramp. You can't keep Butch away from his duty. What kind of language is that? Hello. Hello. I'll kill him. I'll kill both of them. Debbie, mousing around with some big blonde anyone when I knew him, that's cooperation. Debbie, shut up, will you? You sure, nobody? Debbie! Tie your beat us. I ought to know better than to hire anybody with disease. Louis, huh? it's up to you. Anything he wants, boss. Beat it out and get a hold of some guys, will you? What do you want us to get? Anybody with hair in the chest. Get him off the streets anywhere. Offer him anything, only get him. We gotta get that desk out of here. Boss, the shirt off of my back, you know what I mean? Don't bump into anything. I'll be at 200. That dumb immigrant will flop on me, I know it. Can you imagine Butch falling down on me at a time like this? Come on, let's go back to the press room. Yeah, Ed, tell him to give us a ring there. Yeah, tell him to ring us at the press room. Ring us at the press room. <whistles> Louis, don't get back in five minutes, we'll give it out alone. Our millions away. We'll start a fire, have the firemen carry it out, the confusion. Ring that number, will you? Come here, see if we can move it. Hello, is this the lying-in hospital? Did you have an auto smash up in the last? Will you come here? Oh, I see. Well, I beg your pardon. When I'm surrounded with my back against the wall, you're not going to lay down on me. I'm going to lay down on you and spit in your eye, you murderer. Yellow, huh? I don't care what you think I am. I'm going out and find my girl's mother. Oh. Your girl. You and Butch McGurk. Woman lovers. I'm going out and find her. Don't open that. Here he is. Oh, well, tell me. Hold him. Boy. Just a minute, Johnson. Let go of me. What's the idea? What's her hurry? Wait a minute. We want to see you. Keep your paws off of me, will you? Hold him, I. Wait a minute, Hartman. Wait a minute. Who do you think you are breaking in here like this? You can't bluff me, Burns. I don't care who you are or what paper you're editor of. Let me go. Fellas, something's happened to my girl's mother. Hang on to him, boys. We know what you're up to. Probably going out to get Williams. The door was locked. He and Molly were talking. I don't know anything. I tell you, there's been an accident. Johnson, there's something very, very peculiar going on here. Well, you can send somebody out with me if you don't believe me. I wasn't born yesterday. Now, the boys tell me that you and this Molly Malloy... No, nobody's trying to put anything over on you. I'm going to get out of here and you can't stop me. Hey, you ain't going to get anywhere. Sheriff, he's got the whole story sewed up and that's why Burns... That's why... That's why Burns is here. We're not here, Harry. Let us in on it. If you've any accusations to make, Hartman, make them in the proper manner. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you to get out. You'll ask me to what? Get out. Close that door. Don't let anybody in or out. Come on, Pinky, give him a little third degree. Make him talk, Pinky. You've got Williams. Johnson, I'm going to the bottom of this. Tell me, what do you know about Williams? Are you going to talk or ain't you? What do I know about Williams? All right, boys, take him along. I got ways of making him talk. Look out, Joe! Oh, what's the use of fighting, Hill? Right. Hey, he's got a gun. Hey, Walter! Give me that. Where'd you get this? Got a right to carry a gun if I want. Not this gun. I can explain that, Hartman. He was having some trouble on the spray case. I gave it to him to defend himself. Oh, you did, eh? Well, that's very, very interesting. This happens to be the gun that Earl Williams shot his way out with. Oh, getting married, huh? Maybe Williams is going to be his best man. That's pretty, Hildy. Crossing your own pals. What do you know about that, eh? Are you trying to make me out a liar? I know my own gun, don't I? Oh, we might have known who'd give Williams a gun. Don't you ever make a mistake? Oh, now we're getting the story. Then Hilly got that gun from Earl Williams. Where is he? Where you got him? You're barking up the wrong tree, Hartman. I'll give you three minutes to tell me where he is. You know, at the hospital, they're calling Professor Egelhofer. What? With a bag of marshmallows. Take a magazine along. He ain't there. Say, what about Mr. Burns? Ask the mastermind what he's doing here. Speak up, Burns. What do you know about this? My dear Hartman. Oh, can that? Come on now, where is he? The Morning Post is not obstructing justice or aiding criminals. You ought to know that. No? 
Well, Johnson, you're under arrest. You too, Burns. Who's under arrest, you insignificant pimple-headed square-toed spy? You realize what you're doing? We'll see about that. Carl, get the mayor on the phone. Ask him to come over here. That man there. Tell me, Mother, are you all right? What's the idea here? This lady claims she was kidnapped. What? They dragged me all the way down the stairs. Just a minute, lady. What is this man to do with it? He was the one in charge of everything. He told them to kidnap me. Are you referring to me, madam? You know you did. What about this, Burns? Kidnapping, eh? Well, it's beyond me. Who is this woman? What a thing to say. I was standing right there when the girl jumped out of the window. You get the mayor on the phone, Carl? Yeah, coming right over. Now, oh, madam, be honest. If you were joyriding, drunk, or got into some scrape, why don't you admit it, instead of accusing innocent people? Oh, you ruffian, you unprincipled man. You, you, how dare you say a thing like that? Oh, mother, he's just crazy. I'll tell you something more. I'll tell you why they did it. Come on, sir, we've got to get bail. I was in this room. They had some kind of murderer. Hiding him. Hiding him? In here? Hiding him where? Oh, Mother! Where was he? Where the have him? Madam, you're a cockeyed liar! He's in the desk. Holy cat! For the love of... Duffy! Give me that phone. What a break! Ah, I thought so. Stand back, everybody. How? You may have a gun. Come, get your guns out. Oh, he's harmless. Don't take any chances. Shoot right through the desk. Well, he can't hurt anybody. You got his gun. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yes. Gray haired old weasel. City desk, quick. Close that door. Give me the desk. Guard that window. City desk, hurry. You, stand over there. Hey, look how you're pointing that gun. Give me ammo. Hilly, call Duffy. Duffy! No, you don't. Let me have the desk, quick. Do you want to get it scooped? Now, everybody. Hold the wire, I got a flash for you. Aim right at the center. That's murder. When I say three. Hang on for a second. Oh, Frank. Hold it. One of you stand each side of the desk. Something coming up. Take hold of the cover. Hold the phone. We got you covered, Williams. I'll have it in a minute. Ready for an emergency. Right away now. When I count three... Something hot. One. Two. Up with it. Go on. Shoot me. Earl Williams was just captured in the press room in the criminal court's building hiding in the desk. Got you, Williams. Williams found in a roll top. That was hiding. Tom Williams hiding place. Williams put up a desperate struggle, but the police overpowered. He offered no resistance. He tried to shoot it out with the cops, but his gun wouldn't work, so... Uh... Trying to break through the court and the police. Williams was unconscious when they opened the desk. Duffy, the post just turned Williams over to the sheriff. More in a minute. Put the cuffs on those two. Anonymous note received by the sheriff led to Williams' capture. More later. A well-dressed society woman tipped off the cops. Call you back. An old sweetheart of Williams double-crossed him. Following a well-defined trail of blood, the sheriff... Williams gave away his whereabouts when he sent out for food. The sheriff is now tracing a mysterious phone call that gave away Williams' hiding place. Call you back. Where's the old lady? Hey, hey madam, where'd she go? Where's the old lady? Hello, girlie. Give me Jacoby quick. Hartman, you're going to wish you'd never been born. Fine work, Pete. You certainly delivered the goods. I am proud of you. They look kind of natural, don't they, eh, Fred? A sight for sore eyes. Well, it looks like you boys stepped into something up to your necks. Aiding an escaped criminal. And a little charge of kidnapping that I'm looking into. That's the jail. There must be somebody there. Hey, there's the old lady now. It looks like about ten years apiece for you birds. Does it? You forget the power that always watches over the morning post. Your luck's not with you now. Jacoby, I caught him. Williams, yeah, single-handed. Then bring him right over. We'll proceed with the hanging first schedule. You'll be in office exactly two days more. And we're pulling your noses out of the seat bag. Give me the district attorney's office. I'll tell you what you'll be doing. You'll be making brooms in the state penitentiary. Hello, Duras. This is Hartman talking. Come over to my office right away, will you? I just arrested a couple of important birds, and I want you to take their confessions. Duffy, get Clarence Darrow! 
All the lawyers in the world aren't going to help you. This is the Morning Post you're talking to. The power of the press, huh? <laughs> Bigger men than you have found out what the power of the press means. Presidents. Yes, and kings. Fred, whenever you think you've got the post licked, that's a good time to get out of town. On a hand car. You're whistling in the dark, eh? Well, it isn't going to help you this time. You're through. The last man that told me that was Eddie Kane a week before he cut his throat. And I've got the same feeling right now that I had five minutes before that happened. Here's your reprieve. Get out of here. You can't bribe me. What's all this? Get out of here, you. I won't. Here's your reprieve. What? I don't want to be your city stealer. Who is this man? Who is bribing you? They wouldn't take it. You're insane. What did I tell you? The unseen power. What's your name? Irving Pinkett. You drunken idiot. Arrest him. The idea of coming here with a cock and bull story like that. Yeah, it's a frame up. Some imposter. Hey, wait a minute. Murder, eh? Hanging an innocent man to get an election, huh? It's a lie. I never saw him before. Why, Fred. When did you deliver this the first time? They started right in bribing me. Who's they? Them. That's absurd in the face of it, Mr. Burns. He's talking like a child. <laughs> the unseen power. He's insane or drunk or something. Since this unfortunate man, Williams, has really been reprieved, I personally am tickled to death. Aren't you, Pete? Huh? Oh, and you'd hang your mother to win an election. That's a horrible thing to say, Johnson, about anybody. Now, look here, Walter. You're an intelligent man. Wait a minute. All right, Mr. Pincus, let's have your story. Well, I've been married 19 years. Let's skip all uh, that. Take those handcuffs off the boys, Pete. That wasn't at all necessary. I was just going to. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you take the cuffs off the boys? Walter, I can't tell you how badly I feel about this. There was no excuse for Pete to fly off the handle. I was only doing my duty. There wasn't anything personal. Why don't you guys quit politics and take in Washington? What did you say your name was? Pincus? That's right. Here's a picture of my wife. Uh, fine looking woman. Why, well, she's good enough for me. Boy, I'll bet she is. Kelly, what's the matter? What are they gonna do? Those reporters said oh, that- Oh, Peggy, don't start to bore me out now. Nobody's gonna do anything to anybody. Of course not. My old friend Walter Burns and I understand each other perfectly, I trust. And uh, so do I. So do you what? You hoodoo. And now, Mr. Pinkus, if you will come with us, we'll take you over to the warden's office and deliver this reprieve. But, Hildy, they said they'd arrested you. Uh, we were going to have a little feed, Walter, after the hanging. A sort of a buffet breakfast. Horton! I'm coming, Fred. What do you say if we eat it now? Delicious ham and some of Mrs. Hartman's own preserves. Hartman! Oh, dear. Wait till those two read the post in the morning. Hildy, get that guy Pinkus over to the office tomorrow. Nothing doing. I'm all washed up. What's that? I mean it this time, Walter. Oh, Hildy, if I only thought you did. Peggy, if I'm not telling the absolute truth, may I fall dead. I'm going to New York tonight with you, if you'll give me this one last chance. I'm going to cut out drinking and swearing and everything connected with the crazy newspaper business. Honey, I'll never even read a newspaper. I've got an idea. No, sir. Nothing you can say will ever change my mind. This time I am through and I mean it. Peggy, I got a lot of nerve to ask you to marry me. I'm a prize package, all right, but if you'll take me, here I am. Darling, don't talk that way. I want you just the way you are. Gosh, Hildy, I didn't know it was anything like this. Why didn't you say something? I'm the last person in the world to want to step between you and your happiness. You ought to know that. I love you, you crazy mug. You're getting a great guy, Peggy. Yeah, well, never mind the Valentines. Goodbye, you turkey. You're a great newspaper man, Hildy. And I'm sorry to see you go. But if I ever come back to the business, which I won't, there's only one guy I'd work for. You know that, don't you? I'd kill you if you ever worked for anybody else. You hear that, Peggy? That's my diploma. Well, gee, Walter, I don't know what to say except... I'm going to miss you. Same here, son. Fifteen years we've been knocking around together. That's before you were born, honey. And what jams we've been in. And what excitement we've had. Say, 
Do you remember the time we hit the missing heiress in the sauerkraut factory? Do I? Say, Peggy, get him to tell you about the time that we stole only the Haggerty's stomach from the coroner's position. We proved she'd been poisoned. We had to hide for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. What? You don't want to go to New York. Down deep. Well... I was just talking. I, I'd feel worse if I stayed, I guess. If I thought you were going to be unhappy. I mean, if you really wanted to... No. This is your chance to have a home and be a human being. And I'm going to make you take it. I wouldn't let him stay. Go on before I make you city editor. Hurry up, Peggy. He means it. Any objections to my kissing the bride? No, it's okay with me. Go ahead, Mrs. Johnson. Thanks. What time does your train go? There's another 12.40. New York Central, eh? Gee, I wish I had time to buy a little wedding present. Wait a minute. I've got it. Oh, no, Walter. Gee, you make me feel like I'm the bride. Shut up. It's a present from the big chief himself. And if you look inside, you'll find a little inscription. To the best newspaper man I know. And when you get to New York, you can scratch out my name and put yours in his place if you want to. You know I wouldn't do that. Take it, Hildy. Mr. Burns wants you to. You don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, this is the first and last thing I ever got from a newspaper. Goodbye. I've always had a queer opinion of you, Mr. Burns. In fact, I still think you're a little peculiar, but you're all right underneath. I mean, I think you're a peach. So are you. You look just like a little flower. <laughs> Goodbye, you big baboon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Johnson. Be good to yourself and the little girl. Same to you and many of them. Duffy, listen, Duffy, what's the first stop of the 1240 to New York? That's right. I want you to send a wire to the chief of police there. Tell him to stop that train and arrest Hildy Johnson. Bring him back here. Wire him a full description. The son of a... Stole my watch. 